sex, funk, violence, party, and sex. Did I say sex before? Well, you know, band, when your bands are like, bands always think their latest work is a masterpiece. And we're still feeling a bit like that. Um, and that's quite normal. I don't, in, in honesty, I don't think we, we, any of us are thinking, mm, it's our dark side of the moon. Um, or it's our transformer. I think we just felt that the way that people are these days, with, with the way that music is, is consumed, which tends to be people get it off the, the internet, they'll take one track at a time. We wanted people to hear this as a whole album. And this was one way of, 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 of underlining that. Um, and, and we knew it would work as a, as a, from start to finish because it doesn't have filler on it and it, it's got a dynamic to it. I think, yes, we are. Every time, every time you, you make a record, every time you write a song, record it, take it out, play it to people. That, that, in, that is you trying to prove something to yourself. I'm th I don't know if this lost its meaning. I mean, for me, it didn't, never had a lot of meaning anyway. It just means that people recognise you walk down the street and you could get a table uh, late notice in a decent restaurant. Interesting. Well, the whole, the whole thing with the boat, really. I mean, it was just, I, it was almost like a different person did that. I, I did. I did. I felt like it was a different person. It was a different part of me. I think that's why the rest of the band have always kind of felt they, they always felt threatened by the boat. Nick particularly, because it's so un-Duran Duran. It was so. It was so. Was not the guy who was wearing makeup and writing songs. This was a guy who you know who let, who let his beard grow and, and didn't didn't seem to do anything decent with his hair and wore shorts and docksiders and got sort of you know brown arms and, 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 and callous hands, you know? Um, and, it, and it was, and I was amazed. I, I knew I had it in me. I knew I had it in me, but I was actually amazed. With halfway round my first leg, sort of um, 2,000 miles from uh, Cape Horn in the, um, the southern Pacific Ocean, having just come up out of the Arctic convergence into the most incredible sea, and wind ever, I thought, I'm really doing this. Sometimes you sometimes think something knocks you and it just just reminds you you're not watching a movie, that you're living this. And I and I just thought, God, how on earth did I get here? How on earth did I get here? And will I ever get out of it? I, I started writing because I could, actually. I find I was so surprised. I was, I was at home one day and, and I, you know I was a big fan of of, of uh, David Bowie and a big fan of um, Paddy Smith and, and some punk bands. I used, to, I, used to, I used to get guitar parts off the record. I used, to, I used to listen to the record and then I'd learn the guitar part all by ear. I could never read music. And, um, and, the, or, and sometimes I'd get the book. Oh, somebody would give me the book, the David Bowie guitar, the song book. It had those little diagrams of how the chords go, you know, like that or like that or like that, you know, with a bar across the top. I can't do it. There, there you go, that's F. <clears throat> and, um, and I'd learned to play these things. I'd practice and practice and practice. And I, I got quite good at it. And then one day, I just I started playing my own thing. I thought, that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. And I went to kibbutz. I was on a kibbutz in Israel, which is what poor, poor English people used to do when they wanted a holiday in the sun. And I was there in 1979. And I found a guitar. And I was out there on the desert, and I started playing these chords, and it reminded me of something that I knew by Chopin, one of his uh, nocturnes. But it um, was something different. And uh, I thought I could, hang on, I could make a tune out of it. And I actually got a tune going, and, and the, I saw these two girls riding on a tractor out on the desert, the Negev Desert, which, and it must have been two or three miles away, but you could see this tractor in the distance, and one of the girls was standing up like that with the wind blowing in the hair. And I just came, and I came up with the first line, out on the tar plains, the glides are moving. And, and it seemed to be kind of like, I was kind of drawing science fiction and the, and the Negev desert all together in my, in my mind. And I started writing The Chauffeur. Um, and that was it. Oh, I haven't really got to do a
fucking interview today, have I? If I just stroke this little bit here, maybe I'll wake her up. Thank you.